All right, let's get started. So one thing I did off stream, uh, just so that you guys didn't have to sit here and watch it, and so that I wouldn't kill my computer while trying to do it, was I actually exported a bunch of the high poly versions already. Let me pull up that folder real quick. Uh, so you can see that I've I've broken them up into separate objects. I kind of just went down uh, the object and kind of exported each one out to its high poly variation. So you can see I have like the bottom, the mid, uh, and this section. I combined uh, all of the blocks here in the center into one object. And I also combined these uh, sort of paneling right here. Uh, these guys on the sides uh, right in here. And the reason for that is because both of these, this top section and this bottom section, are most likely just going to be mostly flat planes. So it wasn't really worth it to export each one, and I want to make sure that I get these cut lines and everything in the high poly so that it bakes the low poly correctly. And exporting each one would have been uh, really weird, creating, you know, like these little sections in here and things like that. Because uh, there's not a whole lot of topology there, it's more just, you know, cut into the surface, whereas, say, like these uh, bricks here have a lot more to them. You know, because they actually have shape and form and, and edges and things like that. And so I s exported these out individually, but this was all one piece and this was all one piece as well. Uh, and my reasoning for that is it, it's a little more work up front to do it that way instead of combining it all into one object, but it makes baking a lot easier because I can just focus on one piece at a time when working on the low poly, when working on the bake, uh, you know, rather than having to make sure that everything is perfect the whole way up the object. Every time I want to bake, I can just focus on one piece at a time. So a little more work up front, but it gives you a lot more leeway when you're baking normal maps. Um, you'll find uh, this is pretty common when you're working on objects that have lots of little pieces to them. Uh, you'll notice it a lot with things like guns and stuff like that. So the artist will kind of break it apart, bake each piece separately, and then we'll just come back in in Photoshop after and combine it all together. So with these, these are all the high polys. I don't, uh, I don't decimate it. I don't, uh, you know, do anything to reduce it when I export the high poly. Some people do sometimes. They'll do like a small decimation, or they'll actually do um, a Dynamesh on it just to kind of clean it up and reduce it a little bit before the export, but I, I tend not to do that because I want as much detail in it as I possibly can get. And with the, the high polys exported, what I want to work on is actually the low poly versions of them. So I need something to bring into Maya, something that I can start uh, cleaning up you know, so that I can make the low poly from that. You can see what I've done is I've actually gone through and uh, I've actually pulled them down to their lowest subdivision so that we can kind of drop uh, the information down because I don't need the high poly stuff now. We're, we're beyond that point. I've already got that exported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as uh, a new version. And this is a really good idea when you're working with stuff like this is to constantly keep saving out. You can see I've got the ones from sculpting, the different tiers, so this is basically where I started. Then we went to a higher detail version, then I went to my final version. Then I've got one that I designed just for exporting the high polys, so that way I could delete things and move things and combine things as needed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to call this, uh, let's say pillar, we'll say low poly. And you kind of want to get as descriptive as you can in your things. Uh, when you're working on your own, it's not as big of a deal, but if you're working in a group base type, you know, thing, you're working in a company, you're working on a group project, and you had to hand this off to somebody, you want your names to be pretty descriptive so that somebody else can come in and just look at it and go, okay, that's what that is, I know exactly what, you know, this file is without having to open every single one uh, and trying to figure out what it is. So we'll just save that so that that saves into a new project if we don't overwrite our original one. Alright, 
so seeing as let's see probably just gonna start from the bottom up with this I think that'll probably just be the easiest keep everything nice and neat and organized as I move up so let's go and I'm actually going to delete the higher on this because I don't need it anymore This will make your uh, scene easier to work in as well, so I like to do this kind of cleanup just quickly before I, I move on. And I'm just alt clicking on each sub object just to quickly select them. And you can see sub I left the lower subdivisions on some of these so if I go back to one you can see that that's actually the, the base just brick shape that I brought in uh, for my way back to the beginning we slowly turn that up you can see it starts to take on that shape I don't like generally going all the ways back to one because uh, it loses all of its form that's not something I want entirely I'm going to back it out because I just realized I moved that one down to one as well. It's probably five, just so it still retains that shape a little bit. Um, this probably will just be a straight, planar piece when I get to it. Uh, but I want to make sure that I've got, you know, all these little... You can see there's some areas where it kind of like juts out and stuff. So when we do... The, the low plate, it's not going to be a f completely flat plane. I'd like to get how this is uh, further out than this. So there'll be some geometry in here, but not much. So I'll probably drop it to five, I think. I'll just do delete lower, delete higher. We can see we're pulling down those total points quite a bit, so that will make the scene a lot easier to uh, work in. And you can see that we pulled that those total points way down by doing that. So 
That will make the uh, the decimation process a lot easier because it is kind of computer intensive. It's very CPU intensive and very RAM intensive. Uh, so if you're like me and you've got a, a slightly older machine, then it can be a, a pretty rough on it. So especially with streaming, which takes up a, a lot of my CPU. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that out again real quick. And uh, you can see uh, sort of the, the difference uh, in file size. This is 1.5 gigs versus uh, 2.3 for the large one. So it does cut down your file size uh, pretty well too. So it's almost pulled it down by a gig. All right, so I think now it, it gets a little tricky when you're working on a portfolio piece because I'm not bound by uh, sort of a pixel, you know, density or anything on, on what we want to do. I'm not, you know, tied to a vertex count or a polygon count, which would normally would be called in a game environment. So normally what would happen for anybody that's unaware is you would have your art director or who's ever in charge of the scenes come up with a polygon budget for everything. Um, and that would basically be, you know, whatever scene you're making, depending on how big it is, you would have a certain amount of polygons that would need to fit into that scene to make it run optimized, run well, make sure that people were getting a certain frame rate, so you'd probably target 30 FPS on consoles or 60 FPS on PC, uh, sometimes 30 FPS if you are really jamming stuff in there, but basically you, you would have a number, uh, and that was the number of you know polygons that you could hit in that scene, and, and normally, it's, you know, nowadays it's in the millions with uh, current, you know, video cards and everything. Way back when, it was a lot more important to stay within that because you could only, you know, render maybe a couple hundred thousand, uh, you know, or under a million. But now, I mean, it's it's six, seven million easily. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, Horizon New Dawn game that's coming out, we have one dinosaur in that is about two hundred and fifty thousand polygons. Uh, so that gives you a good idea of, of where things are at. Um, you know, back in the day, uh, Gears of War, I think the character was 40,000. Uh, so you can see how things have kind of grown uh, very heavily over time. So for something like this, uh, you'd probably easy, easily be looking at a few thousand uh, for something that has this much curves and shapes and details in it. Uh, so that's probably what I'll be looking for. You know, I'm not bound to FPS. I'm not trying to make a game here, so I'm not locked into it. I mean, I could make this thing 200,000 if I wanted to, but I like to try to just, you know, for practice sake, for getting, uh, you know, good at, at keeping things reduced, I like to try and do my best to make this game ready. So I'm probably looking at uh, maybe 4,000 for this whole thing. That might be being a little bit under but we can see that uh, for instance these panels here on both sides are going to be flat planes so those are going to be very low amount of polygons it's literally going to be one two three four uh, five six it'd be eight vertices for both sides so that's only 16 for this whole section um, so really where the most of our stuff is going to come in is, is these three big chunks this top this middle and this bottom section uh, these front sections don't have very complex geometry, so those will probably be uh, pretty low too. Uh, I didn't cut into them that much, uh, so I shouldn't have to do too much uh, geometry to get some of these shapes out. You can see I went pretty easy on the, the cuts and things that go in there, so those should be pretty low. Um, these bricks have some definition to them, so that's, that's something that I'll want to take into consideration. Uh, for instance, this cut in front right here would bake very easily on a flat surface. Uh, something like this uh, part right here, where it's slanted and the actual geometry itself wouldn't. So that's something that I would want to actually uh, you know, compensate with geometry right there. This could just be flat down here. So these, will, these might be a little bit high, maybe a couple hundred for each one. Uh, and then I'd like to do maybe be a thousand for each of these that's still probably going a little bit um, low just for how much uh, you know you have a lot of angles in here 
and a lot of shapes that I'd like to keep because uh, some of this stuff won't bake like for instance this hard hit right here won't bake very well because it's a very uh, you know very angled gash if you try to do that it would probably look really flat and just not look that good so uh, things like the cuts these slices those will just get baked right in so I don't have to worry about the geometry on those uh, and let's see what else yeah, like this whole section right here. Like this, for instance, this part where this whole section's missing, like that wouldn't look very good baked uh, just to a flat surface because you have a lot of angles in here. And I mean, you could do it. Uh, that's how, like, WoW and games like that sort of do it. They kind of bake that in and then they draw all the shadows and everything in on it. But uh, I'd like to keep some of that geometry, so. Looking at this bottom section, maybe 2000 for this bottom section. So we're going to click on that, we're going to solo it. And, and you know, stuff like this bottom, uh, it has stuff on it, but you know, the player is never going to see that, so that's just going to be flat on the bottom, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, same with most of this top section, you can see some of it, if I turn that back on. But for the most part on this whole inner part, you know, that will probably be cut out and not actually on the low poly. I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to save this again real quick. Alright, so what I want to look at is... I tend to like to Dynamesh it first, because uh, if we... Yeah, if we look at our... Uh, surface. So if we look at our wireframe, you can see that it's it's actually done a, a fairly decent job of maintaining the topology uh, throughout the surface. There's some parts like right in here. Now you can see how uh, this is very clean over here, um, but this is very wavy. Uh, the squares are much, much bigger, and that's just because the topology has been stretched there pretty heavily. Uh, so things like that uh, sometimes can get cleaned up if you just dynamesh, you know, because you want a nice even topology when you decimate. Because um, what it does is it does mathematical calculations to break this down into tries, basically. So if you have sh areas that are, are very bad, like right here, you can see there's a lot of pinching. Um, you know, it, it can cause some weird things on the decimation. You've got some pinching in here as well. So let's try a Dynamesh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this to, let's say, 1024. For some reason, it's not letting me type it in. The resolution really doesn't matter that much here. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things of I like to keep it consistent, but because we're decimating it anyways, it, it's not that big of a deal. That was a pretty low decimation, which actually didn't come out that bad. There's some weird stuff in here. You can see that I've dropped that down, now that has gone down to 90,000. Uh, so playing with the resolution is really what determines uh, how far this is going to drop when we decimate it. I'm not worried about the stuff like in here that much. 
Basically, I just want to retain its shape, is what I want to do. Uh, and if we hit Shift F. Now You can see that if I undo that, it goes back to 663,000. Uh, I'm going to up it just a little bit more, I think. That drops up to 170, so we can pull it back a little bit. I think that's a good point, 150,000. So what we can do now is we can look at our uh, Decimation Master. So it's actually under Z Plugins, and you'll see Decimation Master. And what I actually do is I just pull uh, this whole thing over. I'm just going to dock it uh, right over here. And that way I don't have to keep going up to the menu to see it. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to pre-process. And what that does is that kind of just gets it ready for Decimation Master. And what I want to do, so this would be 200,000 polys. I want to get it lower than that. Let's say four. Maybe something like that. So I'm going to pre-process it, it's going to do its thing, and then let's try to decimate current. Which didn't actually do anything. I act a little weird sometimes, sometimes you got to keep playing with it. You can see that's 5k decimation right there. We hit Shift F. You can see how it's, it's basically triangulated everything. Um, it, it doesn't do quads, so that's something you have to be wary about. Uh, you can see, and it does, it's not 100% perfect. It does have issues. So you can see, like right here, there's just like the little face that's kind of. This little face is kind of jutting out like right here, uh, this little triangle, uh, most likely because, you know, that's where some damage was or something. Um, you know, we'll, we'll clean that up in Maya, basically. That's probably still a little too high, so I'm going to pull this down. I'd like to get, let's say, 3.5. So 3.5 is going to be 3,500 uh, in our points. And that's actually 7k polys, because points is polygons, uh, so for this is actually verts. Yes, you can see. And, you know, areas like this, um, you know, we'll just manually clean up a Maya, because there's a lot of tries, you can see, in these sections that are just going to be completely flat. So what we'll do is we'll actually completely clean these up inside Maya. Uh, so that'll actually get rid of quite a bit too. And if I actually, what we can do is I'll show you what it looks like in my real quick. So we're going to export this. And I'm going to go to our exports and I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, and keeping yourself organized is extremely, extremely important. Um, especially when you start working on on larger projects you know keep everything organized keep your folders there name them appropriately don't name this uh, pillar one or you know object one because you're never going to find it i'm going to call this pillar base 
and LP is just uh, denoting low poly uh, for instead of high poly. So I do underscore low poly. I'm just going to hit save. It's going to export. Uh, you can see that if I actually do, let me go back real quick. So I've got underscore L poly. If I look at this, I've got underscore high poly. So that just tells me when I go into my baking uh, or whatever program I'm going to be using, most likely Painter. I know this is my high poly, the other one's my low poly without having to open them, without having to look at them, etc. So I'm going to open my real quick. And you can see there's a lot that uh, you can kind of manually clean up uh, when you're looking at that. For instance, it did the cracks, um, you know, because it, it tries to compensate for the whole object. Sometimes it does better, uh, you know, depending on the topology and stuff. You can see it tried to compensate for all the little divots and everything else that are in here, a lot of which is just going to be normal apt. You know, for instance, I want this shape here because that's a very big chunk that's missing, but I don't want these cracks. Right, these cracks are pointless. I don't need those in the surface, so I can just normal map that. Um, so, you know, it, it does take a little bit of manual cleanup. You know, it's one of those things that the longer you spend on it, the, the better it's going to look. You know, for instance, I might like this, this little dent here and this one. Don't care about these. Uh, you know, so it's just, you know, it, sometimes you got to go back and forth, kind of do it, redo it, uh, look at it, kind of import it into Maya. There's been times I've imported it into Maya and started cleaning it up and realized that it wasn't very good. It wasn't going to turn out very good, uh, very well, I should say. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll go back in ZBrush and I'll export it again. So if we do an import of that real quick. You can see that we have our low poly, and you can see that I've got 7,000 tries. Uh, so that actually lines up exactly with. If we go back, we'll see our K poly. So it's points. So you kind of want to undercut your points um, because this is what your actual vert count is going to be right here. All right, so we're actually at 7,000 poly. So if I wanted this to be uh, even lower than Let's say I wanted this to be 3k values, and I don't recommend decimating and then hitting decimation again. It does some really weird stuff. It also has a very big tendency to crash when you do that because it's trying to recompute basically the math that it just did, uh, and ZBrush doesn't like that. So I I'd always suggest undoing it and going back. So let's try sending this to, we'll say 1.9. We'll do decimate. We can see now that we're at 3.8. So that's little bit closer to where I wanted to be, uh, you know, poly count wise. I like this a little bit better. It's made, you can see that these, uh, if we go, we pull out a little bit, you can see that these triangles are a lot bigger uh, than our original ones, which is very good. You can see that this was our other one. We have all these little triangles. The more triangles you have on a flat surface like this is the more that you're going to have to go back and manually clean up. So that means more time. Uh, let me turn on shading real quick. Uh, so that means more time because basically what you would do is you would go into vertex mode. You would grab, let's say, two. And you would shift, right click, and go to merge vertices. And you would merge them to center just like that. Uh, and basically you would have to do that for this entire surface because I don't care about uh, these little dips and divots because they're all going to be covered anyways, right? So I would have to do that for the whole thing going all the ways across. And then same exact for the bottom. So you're looking at, you know, a considerable amount of time uh, getting spent there. And there's a lot of like little holes and things that I don't really care about, like all of this in here. 
right? There's really no purpose to all of this. There's some slight height variations, but we'll rely on our normal map and our height map for all of that, so we don't have to worry about that. Really just what you want to focus on is the main shapes, right? So the cuts here, how this is topology is missing, how this is missing down here, right? How uh, this is kind of angled, how there's some missing in here, and so on. So, you know, that's mostly what you want to focus on. So I'm going to undo it, and I'm actually going to set this to 2. And that brings me to 3.999, which is 4K, which is exactly where I want it to be. Right, and we'll, we'll drop it some more. You know, ultimately, I probably want this to be about 2K, which it probably will be once we clean up this top section uh, and these side sections right here. So I'm actually going to uh, export this one. And I'm just going to overwrite that old one. And then I'm just going to save it. Go back to our normal folder. And this is our low poly. Um, you know, if you're ever worried about accidentally double clicking and overwriting one of these, you can make folders. That's something I do too once I start having a bunch of these. And that's probably actually something I'm going to do real quick. So I'm going to say. It's a pillar sculpt. We'll grab these three. And that just reduces your chances of overwriting something by accident. You know, that way you don't you don't start decimating everything and then accidentally overwrite your uh, sculpting file and then you've just lost, you know, weeks or months worth of work. So I'm just going to close Maya because I don't need it right now. So let's grab, let's just say these bricks right here. Same thing, I'm going to do just a quick, let's set this to a thousand. I'm just going to do a quick dynamesh on those. And you can see how that sort of cleaned up that topology, reduced it. So um, uh, for these, we we'll probably get away with maybe, let's say under a thousand. Let's see. Let's take a look at it. So 2K, let's say 500 here. And what we would do is, this is 2000, so if you wanted to go under that, we're going to have to put a decimal in here. It's 0.5. And I forgot to actually pre-process it. You have to pre-process each thing, each object. That's just something I forgot to do right there. And that's not what I wanted. This jumped up by accident. And you can see what happened there is it stayed on a thousand, so that actually put there it stayed at one hundred percent by accident. Um, so that just left it exactly where it was, which is not what I wanted. Try point four. That's probably pretty close. It retains uh, most of the edges, so that's good. Uh, most of these flat edges stayed in pretty well. I might go up just a tiny bit higher because there's some issues. You can see how it did a little bit of weird stuff right here, uh, so I might just go a tiny bit higher. I'll shoot for maybe 500 or 600 a piece on these. And a lot of these are actually probably going to get deleted. Uh, I'll probably actually wipe out most of these back faces, uh, so I'm not too worried about those, just because you won't be able to see them, so there's no point to have them. 
Um, so that's why I like to overshoot my active points because I know I'm going to be pulling it down further inside Maya. So I don't want to, I don't want to reduce it to exactly where I would want to, uh, you know, have it at for the actual model, and then pull a whole bunch of stuff out in in Maya and have it lose a lot of that detail. So I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to actually just go with a thousand on this. Actually, hmm. I think a point nine real quick, or it's going to save on me. Yeah, we'll go down, because this is 1.6k verts. So we want it right around 0.5, I would say. Which is weird that it's dropping it to 500. Let's try one. I think that'll be good. That'll be a good starting point, and I'll just clean up a whole bunch of this interior stuff uh, when the time comes. You know, for instance, like this whole surface could honestly just be flat. Uh, same with this one, but I like to retain those edges because those are the most important part, like right in here. Uh, you know, but all of this could just be flat. I don't really care about any of that. bit of strange just in here. I guess that's just gonna stay no matter what I want it on. Let's try it just a tad bit lower. And this is what I was meaning. You're gonna go back and forth a lot just till you kind of get it where you want it. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. We're just going to export that, and I'm going to open my folder real quick so I can make sure that the naming conventions are the same. So this was Pillar Mid Corners. That just makes it, you know, easier when I'm baking it, so that I can make sure that they stay uh, the same name. That way, I can just find the files easier. So let's do our pre-process. And I'm just going to leave all the settings the same. I'm just going to decimate those and that made those a lot higher. Let's see. Yeah, it's right about there, I think. Made these ones a little bit lower. I think those ones will work out fine. These ones weren't didn't have as, as hard edges on the sides as the one below it did, so.
And the reason I did these individually, um, you know, instead of just combining them all at once, is I'd rather manually uh, snap them together in these portions rather than letting ZBrush figure it out. Sometimes it does some weird stuff when you have harsh angles that come together, so I'd rather just do it manually in Maya, just personal preference. For this one, this one's a little bit of a bigger piece, so I'm probably going to want to uh, make this a little bit higher. Maybe 1500 on this. So let's see, so let's go up to 1. See how that looks. I think it looks pretty good. You know, again, we'll just we'll probably make this flat in here, especially because the player can't they can't shove their head in here, so they can't see if it's actually uh, you know flat or not. So we'll just do that. Uh, you know, inside Maya, probably do the same for most of these insets too, and then this bottom piece as well. But that works pretty well, I think. That would be... Hmm, I should have actually named these better. So this is actually a mistake that I made, is I didn't name these uh, very well, so I don't know which one I'm actually doing here. I know it's one of these two, but I don't know which one. I'm gonna say it's this one. It's not that big of a deal if it's not, I can just re-export them out, you know, and flip the names. So again, we want this to be kind of high, so I'm just going to pre-process current. And let's look at, let's say 2, let's say 2.5. Pretty good job, and again, we'll just manually take out the sections because we don't need them uh, in this gash as well. But retain the rest of the topology pretty well, I think that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do on these panels is I'm actually just going to combine them real quick, so I'm going to go to Subtool. And I'm going to merge, and I'm going to merge down. We're just going to say OK. So now we've got them as one some single object, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to Dynamesh actually on these, pull this down. Alright, 
And so that that should have actually combined these into one object. So we're going to pull these way, way down because I don't need these to be anything really more than just flat planes. So let's say 0.1. And I could just redraw these as planes inside uh, Maya with no real issue. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I just want the shape uh, so that way what I can do is inside Maya I can just snap verts uh, exactly to the corners where they should be here. So here, 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 and here, here. And that way it'll line up exactly with uh, where the positioning is on this one. So don't really have to worry about it too much. I'm actually going to drop this to 0.01. That apparently is a too little. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that, that's fine. Can't actually type today. You can see we're starting to get our, our low poly together here. I'm just going to save it real quick. Dynamesh that down a little bit. Uh, Dynameshing can help the uh, Decimation Master as well because you can see that it pulled it down quite a bit. Uh, and that means that Decimation Master has to do less math. D uh, Dynamesh tends to be a little bit easier on your machine than Decimation Master is because it's moving it to quads instead of tries. Uh, so sometimes just doing this and then doing the uh, Decimation Master can just help your computer out a little bit. And I kind of want this to be about, um, this one's the biggest of the three because it has more sections to it. So I'm going to set this one to three. I'll decimate that. And that actually might be too much. And we can always redecimate these if need be. Again, you know, cleaning up this top section. I need 2.5. I think that's pretty good. It retained all the sections. We'll clean this up. Uh, you know, we'll flatten some of this out. But I, I think that looks pretty good. It maintained like these these sections that were missing here. So now all we have left is the bricks in the center. So what I'll probably do is this is where most of the, the poly count count, poly, uh, polygon count left is coming from. Um, so what I'll probably do is just start combining these down a little bit. And I'm going to hit always OK so I don't have to keep hitting OK every time I do this. Let's 
some of these aren't actually in order, so just be careful that I don't combine it with something that's not a block here. You can see it starts getting a little bit heavier on the, uh, the system as we're starting to combine a whole bunch here. So there's our brick section. So before I do anything, I'm going to save it again real quick. It's notice that I saved quite a bit. So once you've lost a bunch of work because you didn't save it, uh, you learn to save your stuff pretty frequently. And what I'm going to do is there's these are full blocks, so they have backs to them, they have sides to them. I want to get rid of that before I do the decimation, or it's going to try to decimate the stuff that you can't see. Dynamesh should take care of that here, so let's see. And there's a lot of computation it needs to do here, so it might lock up a little bit, but we'll let it just do its thing. You can see the orange bar at the top's moving, so it's doing it's doing what it has to do. So now we have basically one solid object. So I'm just going to save it again real quick now that I've done that. You can see that that's pulled it down to 667,000. So let's go ahead and process that. And for this I want this to be pretty low. I don't want this to be very high at all because I just want to maintain some of the bigger shapes but I don't want to maintain each individual block. I don't want these cutouts in there. I don't want any of that stuff. So let's say one. Decimate that. And that's probably pretty close to what I want. There's some like weird stuff in here. I'll probably actually seal all of these things up so that there isn't the actual gaps here. Let me undo that real quick. I want to say 1.5. I'm gonna overshoot it a little bit. There we go. That way I just maintain those brick shapes. That way I can pick and choose what gets taken out and what doesn't. Um, and the rest will just, you know, there's like a little bit here that crossed over, but I'm not, I'm not super worried about that. We could easily fix that uh, if we wanted to just by continuing this cut over here, redoing that topology a little bit. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna see if that one still does that. Yeah, it does. So it doesn't really matter. I think that looks pretty good. So there we have our low poly. So in the end we ended up with about 13.3 thousand. Um, a little bit higher than what I would want, but we're going to be cleaning a bunch of this up. Now one thing to remember is, let me start up Maya, I'm going to explain the next step real quick. Uh, one thing to remember when baking normal maps is that position is very important. Uh, and what I mean by that is when I built the, the original base mesh inside Maya and imported it into ZBrush, it remembers the position inside of Maya. And so when I import it back into Maya now, we'll go to import. Personal projects, fantasy cave, uh, exports, we're gonna do a little poly, let's see if it lets me select all these at once. Nope. Is that now if I import all of these?
you can see that they're actually snapping exactly where they were on the mesh itself. I actually spelled panels wrong there. For some reason the blocks aren't actually importing, that's weird. Let's see what's going on here. And there are a few, it's it's weird that it actually moved... Uh, oh, I'm actually upside down here. <laughs> I thought that was the base for the second, I was like, why is it down there? Uh, this is just because it probably put um, planes on top, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to viewpoint 2.0 options. Anti-aliasing, I'm going to turn this up, like that, that will just clean up those edges a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on back face going, and that will get rid of that. So that's most of the mission, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to, I don't like this default shiny fong that LT decides that it, be a great idea to put on everything. Don't really understand that. Uh, so I'm going to go to. Maybe so we could just go to this. Go to that phone. And I'm just going to turn down. Specular. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're just going to turn that off because I don't want that. I want a tiny bit of specular, but I don't want much. Something more like that. And then I'm actually going to save this. I'm just going to do. Uh, we're going to make a new project. Projects are really important to make sure that you do. It keeps everything nice and organized uh, and concise rather than just having a bunch of Miocenes floating around out there. Um, I always set projects for each new thing I do. So we're just going to click new. We're going to call this pillar. Uh, we'll call this pillar a little poly. Accept. Then we'll go to File, Set Project, and you can see that it's brought me to my Projects folder already. So we're just going to say Pillar Low Poly to set. And you can see that when I hit Save to save the scene, it's automatically gone to Projects Pillar Low Poly and automatically placed it in the Scenes folder. So now we can just call this, like, so let's say, Pillar Reduction. And you can see my naming convention tends to be lowercase for whatever the first word is, and then uppercase for each word after that. So if I had, let's say, more words in here, like, uh, let's say, first draft. I would do something like that. Um, that's just the way I do it. Uh, you might have a completely different way. That's just the way that I've been doing things for many years. Um, it works for me. It's easier to read. Um, the, the most important thing is that you come up with a naming convention and then you stick to it across all of your projects. Let's see... Uh, you can see this is 23,000 tries without our uh, blocks in here. So let's see why those blocks aren't importing. So looking at our outliner, you can see that it's actually not even in here. So we've got base, mid, our corner pieces, our misspelled panels piece, our top, uh, and then our, our vertical pieces. 
uh, and the blocks aren't actually importing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export these again. I'm actually just going to delete it and then I'll re-export it and see if that fixes it. So let's delete blocks. I'm actually going to try a different name on her, I'm going to call it Bricks instead. It's still not importing, let's see if we can figure this out. Let's just uh, let's save this, close it out, open it back up, see if that fixes it. See if we can open that directly, see what happens. Sometimes we can open it as its own project and then just copy and paste it over. It will retain its its positioning. Yeah, error reading file. So we can see that there's actually an error there with that one. So what we can actually try to do is let's try to import it uh, into ZBrush real quick. So we'll go to our import. We can see that, mm, there we go. So it imports it to here just fine. So I'm gonna try exporting it again from this one. Uh, there might be something bugged in the other scene uh, that's causing it to fail or whatever. So let's try it from a new project. Actually, going to I'm gonna go ahead and close this as well. I'll open Maya back up real quick. Sometimes just stuff like this happens. It's just the fun of, of working with so many different pieces of software. Just sometimes you run into weird issues. Most important thing is you you know how to fix them. I keep like blanking when I go to that past thing because I'm so used to going to the, fo the folder that I use for work um, and I keep looking for that one rather than the folder that this stuff's actually in on my computer at home. There we go, and that fixed it. So yeah, most likely something just bugged in that project, just didn't want to export that file correctly, but you know. As long as you you understand how to do the workarounds, that's the most important part because issues like this will happen. It's unavoidable when you're using you know pieces of software like this that are as complex and uh, you know intricate as Maya and ZBrush and all of those. So the most important thing is you just understand how to fix the problems when they arise. So I don't actually need this anymore. So we'll go ahead and we'll close that. A few years ago, something like that would be pretty crazy to have as a prop. But if you've ever actually looked at some of the things inside Unreal now, you know, some of the stuff that it actually ships with, uh, we're talking, you know, tens of thousands of polygons for simple objects. Uh, so, it, you know, it's not really that high. I'd like to get it lower because I like to aim my stuff for games. Um, 
And if I made a pillar 26,000 polygons, that means something else is going to have to be reduced. So let's try to get this down to at least 15,000. I'd like to get it below 10 if possible, but we'll see where we are when we start reducing this. And so the, the very first thing I like to do when I start working uh, in, I don't understand why I'm not signed in, that's weird, is I like to actually start creating uh, layers of all these objects so I can easily hide them and I can easily keep them organized. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna do that real quick. We're going to go create from selected, double click it so that I could rename it. And I'm going to keep the layer name the same as our actual object name, just uh, to make it, you know, a little bit clear and concise. I'm going to multi-select these. We're going to add a layer. Create layer from selected. Get in the habit of keeping yourself organized. It's super important. It doesn't seem like it would be that important uh, with some things, but it's a really bad habit if you don't do this sorts of stuff because you're gonna find yourself in a mess when these scenes get really complex. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to fix this name real quick. Or I'm just going to rename itself to group. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them and I'm just going to dump the history. Clean those up a little bit. Make sure it pulls any history off from ZBrush that it may have uh, brought in. It's not really not that big of a deal if it has a one next to it. Uh, sometimes if things come in in groups or something like that, it can uh, screw with Maya's naming a little bit because it thinks there's another one when there isn't. There. And that just gives me a little bit of control so I can turn things off, I can make things editable, I can kind of, you know, if I want to make them just wireframes so I can see through things. It just gives me a little bit more, uh, you know, control over each piece, keeps things nice and organized. So just like with the, the decimation, I want to kind of work from bottom to top. You can see that sometimes you're going to get stuff like this where it decimated it and kind of actually moved it so we have a gap in here now. So that's things we're going to have to look at. So I'm just going to hide selected. Not hide selected, hide unselected. That would be better. And let's start cleaning this one up. So the main area that I want to focus on this one is probably the flat sections. So we kind of look at our top here. Um, you know, I don't need any of this, any of these triangles in the center. Essentially, they're all useless. I don't need them. 
So let's go ahead and start getting rid of those. And I'm just selecting vertices, holding shift, right clicking to merge vertices, and then just doing a merge to center. So this is a good section. Uh, Decimation Master, like I said, isn't 100%. It has its issues. So you can see right here what it's actually done. I hold up you to get our move tool out. You can see that it's actually uh, kind of put some faces on top of uh, everything else. It, it, this will happen. It's why you always want to, even if you're not going to be reducing that much, you always want to look over your decimation. Make sure that everything looks okay because it will do weird stuff like this sometimes. See, for instance, here I've got uh, a vertex that's floating out in the middle of nowhere, not connected to anything, so let's get rid of that. I don't want to touch anything on the edge, I don't want to merge these in because I actually need this slant in here. And the reason I keep the move tool on is when you're doing this, sometimes it's really easy to... You can see that my move tool moved, so I know that I have something over here selected. So it's just a little bit of a visual guide for me. We can always manually, I don't want to merge, for instance, if I want to pull, let's say this over here, I don't want to merge this because that's going to drag this one that's retaining this edge over here, and it's going to do some bad stuff. So what we can do is we can hold down the V key, as in Victor, on the keyboard, and we can just snap this vertex to another one. Now just keep in mind that it will try to snap it to any uh, vertex that's in your camera position, so it will try to snap it to stuff beneath it, to the side, so be really careful. Sometimes it's best to position your camera so the vertex you want to snap it to is sort of uh, not near any other vertices so that there's nothing behind it and so on. It just makes it a little bit easier. And when you vertex snap, it doesn't uh, merge them. So if we actually select those, you can see I've got two vertices here. So just make sure you manually clean those up. You can see we've got a little bit of an issue here that was probably caused by that. Uh, so if you have stuff like this, you know, don't be worried to delete the face uh, and kind of just clean it up manually. So let's see.
can just use our pen tool to kind of close that up. Sometimes you get weird little triangles like this. Uh, those tend not to bake very well because the, the surface area is very small. Um, so you got to kind of clean those up manually as well. Try not to lose too much of the surface definition. Like I don't want to pull, uh, let's say this vertex, I don't want to pull it, you know, way up here because then that's not following the normal shape. Um, you know, but, but do your best. You know, for instance, something like this, uh, will, you know, probably be okay right here. Or what we can actually do is we can actually redraw some topology, so we can kind of come in here. I'll just clean that up a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll actually snap this to the one that just got created. So it, it cleans that small little triangle up, but we didn't move the actual vertex that far. So this part isn't exactly, you know, exciting or riveting, but it's, you know, it's kind of a necessary step. We could jump in and just say, hey, this is our topology. We're running with it. Um, you know, the, the joys of working in ArcVis like I do each day, I kind of get to do that because we don't really care about polygon counts, but I like to do the, the game stuff when I'm at home. So I want to spend a little bit of time cleaning it up.
And if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, just let me know. Sometimes merging it will actually cause issues like this. You can see when I just merge that one, that it actually starts that one too far. So I'm just going to undo that and then I'm going to fix the problem right here. This is where the cut was for those actual slices. I think I want to get rid of those. You know, I want to kind of retain uh, the shape of the surface, but I'm going to get rid of the actual cuts themselves.
So we pulled that down by a few hundred already, uh, which is pretty good. Probably need to come down a little bit lower. I don't like working on just one object until uh, I, it's completely done. I like moving throughout the, the main shape, the whole object, and pulling things down and kind of subtracting as I go along, and then I reevaluate it as we get more towards the end. And then I see where I can go back and remove more so that I can hit that target that I'm after. So for instance these, I don't, this is 200 tries, I don't need anything in here. So I'm actually going to hide on selected objects and we're just going to literally just draw a plane here. And I'm just holding V uh, with my move tool, which is vertex snap. When you have multiple vertices selected like this, it's going to try to snap to any vertices nearby. So you can see I, I snapped it right to that edge. What's up, bomb squad? Grab these two edges, I'm just going to extrude them. And we'll just drag it out like that. And I kind of want to make sure that it's pushed into it just for baking purposes. Uh, so let's see. Probably something like that. It's better to have it inside of it um, because of the way projection works. We can always move this if it's deciding to be weird. And we're just going to put it right there for now. And I'm actually going to rename this. Uh, we'll rename this mid panels plane, probably. We're just going to do the, the same exact thing for the other side. I'm just going to combine them together. Then we'll just move them uh, based on the uh, on the bake when we need to. I'm not going to worry about it right now. So we'll turn that off. So that's basically how that's going to be and that's going to bake right onto that flat surface. Um, and that's just literally what we're going to have there. I'm not going to have anything more than that. There's no point to. So this is only <laughs> 12 tries. So this one, there's a bunch of messed up stuff in here. So we're going to, I think what happened is I actually had a thickness to this um, instead of just having it flat. And probably what happened is in the decimation, you can see they kind of like crisscrossed. So you can see there's like a bunch of <laughs> really weird stuff going on here. So we're just going to do, I'm just going to, I'm going to come in from our front view here. I'm going to turn my grid off because I don't need it. And we're just going to start 
combining all of these together because I'm just probably going to have this flat. Like I said, the player can't get his head in here to see this, uh, so there's really no point to not have this anything but flat. As you can see, that created a couple of, like bad faces in there. So, just deleting them, you know, coming back in with the append real quick. And this is a try, so that's okay. You can see this is actually two. Let's see. There's actually some back faces here that we can get rid of because the player won't see those. Those won't get seen on the models. So we can just ditch those. You can see that stuff underneath. The part that matters is actually still there, so...
say. You can see it, it does weird stuff like this. There's really no way around it. There's not much you can do. Uh, just sometimes the calculation messes up and it's like, oh, I'm just going to throw a vertex here for pretty much no reason. I guess I can actually delete yeah, probably that top section too, I don't really need that. And this back section. I mean I could leave it on there, but A it's vertex count and two it's space that will take up the UV sheet. So if it's not gonna be seen there's no point to actually have it here.
if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. So if you have trouble selecting like this where this face is actually I think behind, what you can do is kind of select all of them and then I'm going to control select to deselect the ones I don't want.
sitting here questioning why I had back faces on this to begin with. We're going to pull this thing way under a thousand tries, which is nice.
I know this isn't the most riveting thing in the world, but just one of those fun steps you have to do. Sometimes you can actually do is you can actually hit three on your keyboard to do a smooth preview. And with the way that it moves the vertex, uh, vertices across the surface, you can sometimes see if there's like issues where there's one not connected or there's just one free floating or something like that. Sometimes it's just an easy way to tell. So we've pulled it down by about 2k uh, vertices already. We can go a lot further into that too. Maya does have a built-in reduce tool. I haven't used it too much. The one or two times I have used it, it was pretty decent.
probably save that towards the end. Uh, once I've cleaned everything up, gotten everything where I want it to, we'll probably use that uh, to kind of pull it down just a little bit further.
and sometimes you'll notice that I don't, uh, or I kind of edit the topology so that there's not really long skinny triangles. The reason for that is baking normal maps hate skinny triangles, so I try to avoid them as much as I can.
Just curious to see what those look like if I uh, reduced it manually using a Maya's thing. Can see if this one has some issues that would definitely need to be fixed before anything like that happened. I believe it can't have holes in it either, which would rule some of this out. Gonna stick to my manual way, I think. One thing I'm gonna actually do is do this real quick. One of the reasons I'm reducing it too is that 6k, let's say, I'm just going to do an automatic real quick. And if we look at our UVs, let me bring that over, you can see it's a lot of stuff on here. Um, but the automatic does a pretty good job now, uh, they've upped it in 2016 to be a lot better than the old ones, but you can still see that it's still a lot of pieces, it's a lot of edges to deal with. So if I wanted to sew some of this together, uh, let's say, let's grab one of these edges, you can see that this and this connect, but didn't move and so, actually hold on to me. You can see that there's just a whole bunch of stuff to sew together in here, right? I'd have to cover through, remove all of these. Uh, I grabbed more. As you can see that it's starting to... It just gets really confusing when you have this much stuff, right? You've got things everywhere, you've got edges everywhere. It makes it really hard to clean up. Um, so reducing that will help quite a bit. You know, likewise, if I did an automatic on something like this, You can see all the pieces there, so you want to get that as low as you can. It makes you being a hell of a lot easier. Even something like this, post automatic, and go to our editor. You can see that that's a little bit better um, than the original. There's still a lot of stuff here, but it's at least a little bit cleaner. This is the one we did manually. Doing an automatic unwrap on stuff is actually an easy way to find errors sometimes. So you can see that I've got these faces right here. Uh, let's see, like this one right here. By focusing on that, you can see that's super thin. What we can do is by selecting face in the UV editor, we can actually find this spot on our mesh. If we hit F to focus in, we can try to look at where that is on the model. Map, so we can see that it's something wrong in here. So what I'm going to actually do is, let's see what way that's facing. Yeah, so we can see we actually missed one of these in the cleanup, so we can go ahead and actually just delete that.
We don't want free floating vertices like this, um, because that's technically making this an end gun, which is not something we want. So we want to make sure that stuff like that's cleaned up. So if we were to now automatic that again, you can see those little pieces are gone. So it's exactly what we want. So it's, a, it's actually a really easy way to tell if things are, are messed up or broken uh, in the mesh is just to do a quick automatic, see if there's like some weird faces that are sitting somewhere uh, and then you can easily delete them or clean them up that way. And you can see like some things like right here, for instance, focusing on that. You can see with having so many faces, you get stuff like this where it's uh, Maya's not sure if it wants to be in front, if it wants to be connected to this piece. So, getting it reduced down will help uh, fix a lot of issues and make it a lot easier to UV unwrap at the end. Honestly, something like this could probably be reduced pretty easily. You know, Free-floating ones like this are actually okay because it's still a try. You've got one edge here, one edge here, and one here, so that's actually still a try. Um, this might be a little long and thin for a bake, but I'm actually just going to leave it like that for right now and we'll see when we go to bake it if that's a problem. Let's see how Maya's reduced does on these. That honestly would probably be good enough. So I'll probably call it there for a day. Uh, we've got you know everything on a good roll here. We'll just need to keep reducing everything, getting everything. Uh, Lower 24,000 is still a little too high, so I don't really want to sit up at that level. So it'll just be more of the same, more reducing, more uh, deleting edges and vertices and all of that jazz. So we'll probably work on that next time. Uh, like always, you can see my stuff on YouTube. I put everything up on there after the fact. Uh, you can also check out the Polycount uh, link down below for the whole project. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching.